Okay, we're looking at a hydraulic pump here. We're looking at a hydraulic pump both for the fact that it's a hydraulic pump. And maybe you didn't know it, but one of the important things with a hydraulic pump, very important, you'll find a lot of times uh, in repair jobs and stuff, the front seal blew out. This one didn't. This one had another problem. They uh, cracked it on assembly. Somehow they got it crooked and cracked the ear. It split through and started leaking. So that's why it's here and apart. But you have right behind the front seal on most hydraulic pumps and a lot of motors, there's a hole. And that hole goes through to one of the cavities. And what that hole does is that bleeds off the pressure that's behind the seal. If you have a bearing in here, sometimes if this has a roller bearing or a ball bearing back here for the pump, this one just has a journal bearing, it will um, still have a close clearance ring, the same as there is a journal bearing, and after that it will have a place for the pressure to bleed back. It's very important that that pressure, and this one, in fact, it tells me which way this goes, that port has to line up with the side that is the intake, which the intake on a pump is generally the bigger one. Because suction, you've only got the atmospheric pressure of approximately 15 PSI pump pushing your oil in. Your outlet can be smaller because when it's coming out at two, 3,000 PSI, it doesn't take as big of a hole for it to go through. If this was too small, what you end up having, say we wanted to reverse uh, rotation, in fact, on this pump. We could reverse the rotation on this pump uh, and, and how we would reverse on this particular one, which gets back to this hole. We could take this uh, plug out here, put it in there, and on this one, we could reverse this from side to side and now it would be reverse rotation and this would still be the inlet. If we had it here and were to just plain reverse rotation, of course it would normally blow out the seal, but what we would do is we would open this up, pull out the plug, put it over here, leave this in the same direction, and then we'd have to do one other thing, is we'd have to turn this slower, which is where I was getting at a little bit ago, with the pressure. Why do we have to turn it slower? Turn it slower is its maximum RPM. This pump's probably a 3000 RPM pump originally, but that's figuring 15 PSI, able to suck in enough oil of normal viscosity through this port without cavitating and ruining the pump. If you make too much restriction on the intake of a hydraulic pump, it will ruin the pump. Even if we're not asking it to do anything strange on the output, it will ruin the pump because of not being able to suck enough lubrication through to cool the pump, just to cool it. Uh, there was one many years ago I was working with help troubleshoot, and it was a uh, double. They originally had two pumps, and then instead of using two pumps, they used a single pump that was a double chamber. So it had two gear sets pumping oil, but they were pulling the oil out of one common inlet. And between the two of them, it was sucking too much oil and it would burn up in a matter of 30 seconds. It was actually amazing, really amazing at how quick it would burn up for lack of uh, oil in brand new pumps. They, they burn up three pumps before I got a chance to look at it. And I had to look at the specs a little while because I'm looking at this, uh, it all looks okay and it's kind of small here, but I don't know. And you started looking at what the pumps were supposed to do and then you're like, no, there ain't not enough oil. And they made a bigger hole in it, put it back in. The next one they built, these were all new pumps. They built another one brand new, bored a bigger hole in it. Everything was fine then. Also, so we're looking at gear pumps here. How does this gear pump work? Whichever way we're going with this, we have got a couple of gears. Yeah. Okay, put it in there. That one was easier to put in first. Bigger handle, easier to put in later. Okay, when you turn the gears, the oil is going around the outside of these gears. There's oil going around on both sides. It just gets trapped in between in the open teeth and the closed teeth push together and squish the oil out. <gasps> Uh-oh, I just made it come out the inlet. It doesn't go that way. It goes this way. 
So that's, again, one of those things you want to look at. Look at the rotation. It's the outside that does the pumping. The gear teeth go around there. Now, there's another version of this pump that they make, um, regardless of brand. There's the, the two plugs generally for rotation. Uh, sometimes you might even have to have one that doesn't have plugs. It just has a hole drilled over here. No hole, nothing on the other side. I take, drill this a little bit, put a 16th inch uh, pipe plug in there, and then you can drill a hole from the other side. Again, you can reverse the rotation, do some things that it wasn't meant to do. Real common one that you'll also see, and a lot of people want to order these for projects. I say don't. Just, just try and avoid it. They have, uh, and you'll see this with motors a lot of the time, they'll have one with a little pilot valve that goes back and forth in here. It kicks back and forth side to side. Whichever side has high pressure, it kicks it to the other side and ports it so that the low pressure side connects to this hole and then uh, lets the oil come out. Well, if you've got any dirt at all in the system, those will plug up and then that will be another one of those troubleshooting things where you've seen the seal blow out because that little pilot, uh, it's not a pilot valve, there's another name for it anyway, little valve that slides back and forth, whatever you want to call it, whatever you call it. Name, the exact right name I'm not thinking of right now. But it uh, gets stuck and is a problem. Um, another version of that, instead of having a valve sliding back and in, in forth, is with two check valves. And we had one place I was at, we had ones that had two check valves. The high pressure side, it was always a one rotation pump. The high pressure would continually on one side get plugged up with uh, little pieces of crud and then it would blow the seals out. And I didn't figure that out at first what was going on. Um, at first I put better seals on it. I thought we were losing the seals because we had lots of dirt and crud and then I got to actually tear one of the pumps apart. So at that point I came in here and we had 12 machines that used that pump and maybe four spares in the warehouse. And little by little, I started ordering them out of the warehouse, drilling out both sides and putting a set screw in the one you plug and the other one so that we could get away with those check valves. And that took care of that leakage problem. But we had another problem that happened with that exact pump was eventually, it was like this with the journal bearings, but the, uh, the journal bearings that were in it, yeah, they had, it had replaceable journal bearings and I could get the bearings, I could get the new gears, and the gears were relatively inexpensive, a new gear set for it I think was $500, and the bushings were a couple hundred bucks and we could go about rebuilding them. And I suggested at the same, that we just replace this hole with a different style of pump that was US made, that one was a German made pump. I wanted to replace it with a US made uh, pump. It wasn't metric, it had to come with uh, inch mounting flanges. We would have had to make a few little changes so I had to get okays from other people and they said no, it's gonna avoid the warranty, which was already two years expired. Uh, somebody didn't wanna stick their neck out and make a, make a change. But the thing was that pump was $800. I had it already sourced and so that was one of my, uh, the engineer was not I wasn't getting along with the engineer that day. So, but when we didn't do that and coming back down to the shop, I'm trying to make these things work where we can keep going. The pump was $12,000 and it was about the same, yeah, it was a little bigger, about half again the size of this one. It was $12,000 for that pump. And it was a two year wait. And we had to have these pumps to keep our stuff going. Sometimes we were down low on these silly little pumps. So, since we couldn't replace them with something else, I had a warehouse full of new, re new gears. They figured we could rebuild them forever, and they would, have let me, they would have let me buy them for 12 grand a piece. I could have ordered them up and eventually got them. It wasn't just about the money. It was about it was stupid. Um, so, anyway, what I ended up doing was one of those things that normally in a machine shop you say, you can't make hydraulic pumps. You're just a normal everyday job shop. We were less than a job shop. We were a repair shop for a mine 
that had maybe one eighth of the equipment that I've got in my shop. But what I did was it was quite similar to this. I can't get it slide apart, but anyway, this middle section was where it would wear. The bushings would get worn out, and so the gear teeth would eat this housing out. And as the housings got worn out, there was a point where you got 15 thousandths of an inch wear here. You put a new bushing in it, you put new gears in it, but it won't pump good because it's just too loose against the housing. So what I did was I set up and I ordered cast iron out of the warehouse. We could order blank materials. They had quite a bit of it there. And I ordered a chunk of cast iron and turned it down, milled the sides off. Um, I must have set up, because I rounded the outside too, I must have set up the dividing table, rotary table, and rounded the outside anyway. So I made a whole series of new center sections and started again rebuilding pumps, putting them back in the warehouse. Um, hydraulic pumps are pretty neat. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Also, while we're here, the, the uh, fittings. This is an SAE O-ring boss, which is a real common fitting you run across. They're good fittings. Um, they are much better to use instead of pipe. The seal is on a chamfer here with an O-ring. In fact, I use them for a lot of stuff beyond hydraulics. They make real good oil drain plugs. Um, this particular fitting, you can adjust the direction and then tighten it down with this nut afterwards so that it seals. When you first put this style in, you wanna back the nut off so it's got the O-ring a little bit tight. Turn it in just hand tight and once you get it down to where you want it, then turn it around however much you want it, and then tighten the nut last. And that way you can pick direction, you can tighten it. The one thing that you want to do with these though, people will cuss them if they don't understand them. Every time you pull it off, go get a new O-ring. They're no big deal. It's a 900 series O-ring when you're looking for it too. They have their own special series of O-rings just for these and uh, just go grab a new you can buy a whole kit for about 60 bucks that gives you all the different standard sizes of those they go all the way up to two inch uh, the fittings are are sized by dash sizes which is the nominal hose size this one here is a dash 10 which means it is 10 sixteenths of an inch nominal hose size that it's meant to go with they have a sizing for um, I think this one here looks more like a 12 on the hose size. And in fact, the new replacement pump that'll come in with this will be a 12 on this size also. Um, this is a one right here. There's charts you can look up. There's standardized uh, splines and fittings here. This is an A. An A has got a three and a quarter inch, and a nine spline. Um, they're not always standard. Sometimes they're sort of standard. Sometimes they'll, they'll mix up a standard spline of a bigger size, especially if they're trying to be brand specific. It's for an intercase harvester, whatever. Um, they'll mix the two up, so it's standard components from the pump manufacturer, but they're not standardly put together. So it makes it a little bit hard for you to get a replacement, but there's ways around that too, though. And a lot of manufacturers will make specials without too much weight. They just won't be on the shelf. Um, a lot of times I'll change stuff so they take a more common one. Um, anyway, want to talk about pumps a little bit. Big thing with the pump, this bleed off hole is just a really important one and getting your flow where it's functional. Um, we could probably talk more about pump things here and there, but we'll talk some more about hydraulic pumps again when we rebuild the hydraulic pump for my 988. Uh, I have a small fleet of 988 loaders that I use. <clears throat> when I first saw 988s, I fell in lust with them. Um, and I thought, boy, you know, I'd like to have one someday. I now own four of them. I only got one running right now, but we're gonna make two more run. Uh, the other two do run, but um, one of them needs the new, well, sort of run. One has a good engine that needs to put in it. The other one needs a hydraulic pump. Anyway, we're gonna pull hydraulic pumps off of two of them put them together in a parts pile, and we will actually rebuild those, which most people don't do. I'm not saying we're gonna replace the cartridge. I'm saying we will physically go to our 
machining tools and we will rebuild the vein hydraulic pump. A very forgotten old school thing, but stay tuned. Oh, and subscribe and like and uh, ring the bell, whatever, yeah.